Episode 7 of Only Murders in the Building just dropped, and if you thought things were complicated before, buckle up. With secrets unraveling faster than we can keep up, it looks like this killer might be tied all the way back to Season 1. Could the entire murder spree have been brewing for years? Let's break down this episode, dive into the killer clues, and explain that shocking ending. Spoilers ahead. In episode 7, the trio is back to doing what they do best, sleuthing into the early hours of the morning, updating their infamous murder wall with clues, photos, and connections. But this time, things take a dark, eerie twist. The way everything seems to be spiraling suggests that maybe, just maybe, the killer has been playing a long game. After combing through every possible clue from previous murders and current threats, they're beginning to suspect that the killer targeting them now has been after them since season one. That's right, folks. What started as an isolated incident might be part of a much larger, more sinister web. This revelation isn't just mind-blowing. It's downright terrifying. Every murder they've investigated, Tim Kono, Bunny Folger, and now even Saz, could have been connected from the start an intricate tapestry of deception and death. If that doesn't give you chills, I don't know what will. This theory gains even more weight when we think back to all those unresolved, seemingly small incidents from earlier seasons. Remember when they thought Sting might have poisoned Winnie, Charles's beloved bulldog? It felt random, but what if it wasn't? Turns out that wasn't just a weird subplot. It was another distraction in a much larger, carefully orchestrated plan. And let's not forget those cryptic notes that showed up over the seasons. The handwriting matches, the vibe matches, it's all coming together now, like pieces of a puzzle that was right in front of us the whole time. The genius of this show lies in its attention to detail. You can almost hear the writers saying, we had you all along and you didn't even know it. If the showrunners really planned this from the start, kudos to them. It's not just a whodunit anymore. It's a how didn't we see this coming kind of moment. Now, let's talk about the jaw-dropping event in this episode, Saz's murder. Unlike previous victims, Saz was actively investigating the case. She was smart, brave, and maybe a little too close to the truth for the killer's comfort. Her death wasn't just random, it was calculated. And the note on her desk, sick pup, is more than just a taunt. It's a chilling callback to Winnie's poisoning a signal that this killer has been observing, waiting for the right moment to strike. This note suggests that whoever is behind these murders has been watching the trio far longer than anyone realized. Could Saz have been under surveillance, just waiting for the perfect moment to be taken out? But the mystery deepens with the Westies, the gang across the street. These guys have flown under the radar for a while, but now they're being thrust into the spotlight. Rudy and Vince, two members of the gang, seem like low-level thugs, but their recent actions raise some serious questions. They're caught on CCTV cashing checks in Dudov's name, despite him being dead. This is major. Could they be tied into a murder cover-up? Or could they be another red herring cleverly planted by the writers to throw us off the scent? Deeper dive, as the episode progresses, a new theme emerges. Doubles, look-alikes, and mistaken identities. This season loves playing with the idea that things and people aren't always what they seem, and Loretta's revelation only adds fuel to that fire. She confesses that her stand-in, not her, was the one who rejected Oliver's proposal over the phone. Can you imagine? Oliver has been heartbroken, thinking Loretta didn't love him back when in fact it was all one big misunderstanding. That's the beauty of this show. It can pivot from high-stakes murder to laugh-out-loud moments with the flick of a scene. But beyond the romance and comedy, doubles and misidentifications have darker implications. Could this concept tie into the overarching mystery? What if someone's been impersonating another character? Or worse, what if one of the trio isn't who we think they are? It's a theme that's been teased before, but in episode 7, it feels more deliberate. More pointed. Could a doppelganger be lurking in the shadows? Let's not overlook Doreen, Charles's sister, played by the ever-hilarious Melissa McCarthy. Her quirks and obsession with dolls inject some much-needed comic relief, but don't let her eccentricities fool you. There's something off about her. Could her jealousy over Charles and his friends play a role in the mystery? She's definitely one to keep an eye on, especially since this show loves throwing unexpected characters into the mix. 
when you look at the bigger picture, uh, the show's long-term narrative structure becomes even more impressive. Season four feels like a culmination of everything that's come before, drawing connections between the seemingly random events of previous seasons. Take the poisoned pets, for example, Winnie in season one, and now the clues surrounding Saz's murder. These are clear indicators that the killer has a sick sense of humor, enjoying the emotional turmoil they cause just as much as the deaths themselves. Every small detail is building toward a much bigger conspiracy. And then there's Glenn. He's been suspiciously absent this season, which only makes his shadow loom larger. Glenn's behavior in earlier seasons always hinted that he knew more than he was letting on. Could he be the puppet master behind all of this, pulling the strings while staying just out of reach? The ending of episode 7 leaves us with plenty of unanswered questions. Saz's murder seems to point directly to the Westies, but something about it doesn't sit right. The show loves its misdirections, and this could be yet another one. Then there's the photo found in Vince's apartment that eerily resembles Saz. Was Vince stalking her? Or does this photo reveal something even more sinister, like a connection we've yet to uncover? Uh, as the trio wrestles with these revelations, it becomes clear that this season is building towards something big. The danger is escalating, and for the first time, it feels like the trio themselves might be in the killer's crosshairs. The question is, will they solve the mystery before it's too late? With only a few episodes left, the tension is at an all-time high. Could season four of Only Murders in the Building deliver the biggest twist yet by linking everything back to the very beginning? Let me know your theories in the comments. And if you're dying to catch more episode break breakdowns and recaps, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the playlist in the top corner to stay in the loop. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and if you are new to our channel, subscribe and click the bell icon so you do not miss out on our latest videos.